Section wrapping um, is defined uh, by the, the section tag, and you can use it to help uh, indicate uh, the structure of your document in a way that improves readability to uh, the computers that are trying to understand the outline. Um, you don't technically need them, but it can organize things better, and uh, it's generally a good idea to use them, if only for your own sake, because then you don't have to learn all of the uh, section rule, sectioning and heading rules as closely, um, because a lot of it depends on kind of complicated structural rules based on when heading tags end and begin and what the, what the type of uh, element is being used. It's better to just uh, set it all out apart with a, with a section tag. So the HTML spec encourages you to explicitly wrap sections and elements of section and content instead of just relying on these rules. So in this case here, we've got um, some made up headings. And the H1 is followed by a lot of other um, headings, but they're all actually underneath it, except for this paragraph um, is not in the section. So if, if we didn't have this section element right here, it would not be clear to you that um, this last paragraph here with the content of grunt is actually directly underneath the H1. So the way that, that this would get parsed would be this H1 is the first level, and it has this grunt paragraph as uh, directly underneath it. So it's, this is actually a first level uh, paragraph. It's not, even though it follows all these other ones, it's, it's not a child or a part of any of these subsections. And then this section tag kind of makes it explicit that all of this is the section that is underneath the H1. And then you have H2, H3, H2, H3. This would be a section here. And this would be a section. And note that this paragraph here would actually be, again, underneath this H2. So if you wanted to put a section around this part, you could as well. So let's take a look at how this actually would play out real quick. Here's the uh, code for what we were just looking at. And this is how it shows up in the browser. So you're going to end up using styling to make sure that it looks a little bit better than this because this is uh, it's using the complicated rules and it may be a little bit confusing. But you should be able to see that this is the largest text. It's the level one heading corresponding to this heading here. And then this section, if I highlight it, is all of this. So this grunt text right here is, a, is part of this section, part of this level heading. Now the next two elements, bar and I don't even know how to pronounce this made up word, quicks, are both the second largest text, which makes sense. They're level two headings. And they're both inside this section. And H3, thud, is the next largest, along with blah. They're both child, children of this. Baz here would be a part of this section. All right, let us, let's look at some further examples now. Um, say this is a basic outline for a document that you have. It's about apples, so all of the rest of this page is about apples. And everything following this H1 is going to be in underneath that heading. And the first thing here is apples are fruit. It's clearly the first paragraph underneath this heading. And then you have two subsections for the heading, taste and color. And um, taste has a further subsection of, of sweet. Um, let's look at it real quick. It just looks like this. 
Now, if we were going to improve this heading a little bit, we could add some sectioning content tags to clarify what exactly is the section of what. So this is all one section. Then we can add a further section underneath the taste. All the way down to above the color section. Now this is clearly its own section. Furthermore, we could add a section here. just for this. So if you remember the rules that we had, this section gets the heading of the element above it. So the, the heading for this section is this right here, sweet. The heading for this section is taste. And then lastly, we'll add a section here. The setting, heading for this section is color. And let's fix the indentation. So now it should be clear what exactly is happening. Now if we tab over to the browser again and refresh, nothing actually changes because all of what we just did here was already uh, defined it according to the rules, but we just made it clearer. And now when we're adding code in later, if we're going to put paragraphs in, we're not going to get confused. Um, and maybe put something in a place that we don't realize is, uh, is uh, going to be headed by the wrong thing. So right now, if we put something here after, after this paragraph, we can specify if we want it to be a child of this by putting it in, the, in this section, or by putting it inside this section, a child of taste. So the last thing we're going to do today is look at a couple of real-world examples